What's up, church? Bam! Welcome <laughs> to this <laughs> week's segment <laughs> of D D A. Hey, what's up, church fam? Welcome to this week's segment of DTS. Before we get into the sermon, my guests who are full of the joy of the Lord, we are going to switch it up. Uh -huh. So instead of me asking you guys a question that you have to answer, you're going to say your name, but after I ask the question, the other people mm -hmm. will answer for you. Mm -hmm. So here's the question. If you would be any breed of dog, what dog would you be? <laughs> and this could be because of looks, personality, uh -huh. whatever. Okay, so I am Amy Carpenter, and I'll leave the rest to you. I could see a young golden retriever. <laughs> Some type of golden. <laughs> golden, do not golden doodle. I, no, I would no. see like young, playful golden retriever. Kind of like, um, <clears throat> did you ever watch Air Buds or Marley mm -hmm. and Me? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm Cammy. <laughs> I think she would be an Australian Shepherd. Same. That's all I see. Yeah. That's it's because with your eyes, I was thinking Husky or Australian Shepherd, but you have that like this golden hair, <laughs> mm -hmm. and yeah. And I'm Brenda. And what Brenda. Would I be? <laughs> there were like hey. a million different things we thought. I was thinking German Shepherd. German Shepherd. Oh. At one point. I could actually kind of see yeah. it. And then a black poodle, maybe. Yes. Yeah. I think just because the curls. Like, like black, black lab poodle dark mix. Brown. And then also a husky. Yes. Yes. But yeah. yeah. I could be all of those. All of the yeah. above. Mm. So, yeah. As long as I'm cute. Right. That's all I care about. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's Beautiful. great. Okay, well, mm. this week, we're still in Red Sea Revelations. We're in part seven. And the... <clears throat> The title of this sermon was The Push of His Presence. The main point of it was that God loves to put us in positions that require a deeper level of trust and where his presence is undeniably real. It's in difficult times that God reveals himself to us the most. God doesn't just go ahead of us and he never abandons us, but he often goes behind us to push us forward in faith and obedience. So what's it up to you guys? I like the point where Don was saying that God's presence is better in the trial than say we don't have trial and then we're exempt from having mm. his presence <clears throat> um and when he talked about that in sermon prep too i was just reminded that in the hard times is when we get to see his character and like another side of his heart and it's just the same with one another relationship with someone else like when we're going through hard times with someone we get to see another side of them and we appreciate mm -hmm. them fighting mm -hmm. that fight with us and you grow grow stronger in mm -hmm. the relationship yeah. yeah and so i just like looking back on my times when it's been hard some of my favorite parts about god and his heart um came from just walking through hard times mm -hmm. with him mm -hmm. so. same yeah i was thinking like how comfort and growth don't coexist so it's like mm -hmm. how are you going to grow as an individual if you don't go through hard times mm -hmm. like any hard time you go through that's what you grow mm -hmm. through yeah Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> for me it was the whole like idea or part when god moved behind the israelites mm -hmm. because i feel like sometimes when that happens like in our own lives people can take that as like abandonment mm -hmm. but in reality it's just god like giving us space to go deeper mm -hmm. and to trust with him. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, I loved, like, this whole sermon hit me. I felt mm -hmm. like he, it's like he wrote this for me, just where I'm at in life. But he said, God is calling us into a deeper trust with him, and he's doing that by putting us in positions that require us trusting him like never before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's literally where I'm at in life right now. Um, just like with moving and adulting and like all the things I'm going to have to face. Like it's all good things, but um, it's all like healthy challenges. And I know that um, God is giving me space to go deeper yeah. with all the stuff that's uh, coming at me, all the stuff that I'm going to have to tackle. Um, it's going to require me to go deeper with God, to trust him more, to have faith for more, um, and just to see him in new ways. Like um, because growing up, like, I never really had to see God as Jaira, my provider, but now that I'm, I have to become mm -hmm. more like financially dependent, yeah. independent. And now I have to see God as, okay, God, you're my provider. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you go through um, 
a, a new situation, um, a difficult experience, uh, you get to see a different side of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and then the scripture we're going out of was Exodus 14, 19, 19 through 20. Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was a cloud in the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. And our first point is God puts us in positions where his presence is undeniably real. God uses difficulties to cultivate within us a greater appreciation for himself. Maybe not so much in the middle of it, but once we are on the other side, we can see how God was involved. God's presence in a trial is much better than exemption from the trial. The greatest thing about a struggle isn't always a victory, but the revelation of his heart towards us. Difficult times are what sensitize us to God's nearness. And the first question is, when has God put you in a position where his presence was undeniably real? Yeah, I love that point. Like... Okay, again, what Amy said, like, God's presence in a trial is much better than exemption Mm -hmm. from the trial. I think we can all look back and be like, I'm grateful I went through this, even though at the time Mm -hmm. it sucked and I wouldn't want to relive it. Yeah. It's like, I... I wouldn't take it back because of... Because what I learned from it was so valuable Mm -hmm. and, like, life-changing. For me, this past fall, I went through, like, I guess a season of loneliness Mm-hmm. And I I do not want to relive fall mm-hmm. 2021. A lot of stuff happened, and I I just didn't feel like myself. Like, it was just kind of a, like a sad time, just for a lot of different reasons. I was going through – that time was um, a time of lots of change for me. Like, I went from – being in high school doing the same thing for four years like it was a Mm -hmm. rhythm of like I'm hanging out with these people these seasons um I do this sport this time I do this club Mm -hmm. and this thing and it was always just going from one thing to the next being with the same people having the same routines um same uh friend group and even in in the summer I would uh train for cross country Mm -hmm. I would do the same stuff and then all of a sudden it's like all that's gone and I'm just like whoa, who am I? Like, what am I going to do? All my friends are going to college or YWAM or um, getting married or going to this place. And then I was like, wow, I barely have any friends here. And then there was a lot of changes happening in my family. And I just felt like so alone. Like, And I wouldn't take back that time because it brought me to a place where I had to come to God to be my friend, Um, like the friend that sticks closer than a brother when Mm -hmm. I felt like I couldn't Mm -hmm. even be close with some people in my family, like God was just so close, and I remember like being in my room just like crying and like feeling alone and just like so confused about my life, Um, but God would just meet me and like I would just feel his presence in my room and like he just felt so close. And that's when he really revealed himself to me as my friend, Mm -hmm. like as my best friend, like someone that like when I felt like no one else could understand Mm -hmm. me, no one else was like, no one else wanted to listen to me. um, No one else like, and I'm not saying I was completely alone because I have, Mm -hmm. I have family, like Mm -hmm. I have friends in this church, but um, in terms of just being with, surrounded by people every day. you just feel alone. Yeah. Yeah, Even if you're, yeah. Even if you're. Well, I was doing online school. Well, no, mm-hmm. it was it was weird. So I had, like, some classes in person, and those classes had, like, ten people. So it's like you're not going to have mm-hmm. very many yeah. friends. And then the rest of the time I would just be doing online lectures, online homework, and online everything for school. Mm-hmm. And so I was just, like, alone in my room a lot working. So it was just, it was just really rough, but, like, that's when I started to become the – become spiritually the strongest Mm -hmm. um I started writing to God more I got really into writing poetry I got really um into reading more and studying more um when it comes to just like my relationship with God and he just spoke to me so much in that time because I really I really had to lean on him Mm -hmm. because I didn't have anywhere else to turn Mm -hmm. yeah I wasn't as distracted yeah that's awesome for me again when I was on outreach (laughs) me and the other people that were on the team had different opportunities to preach at churches or share testimonies and that was definitely out of my comfort zone but I knew it was something the Lord wanted me to do so I kind of kept avoiding it but then it was my turn um, to step up and um, volunteer for that and so 
I was like super nervous, like preparing for it. And then it was the Sunday um, that I was supposed to preach, and the Lord had given me a verse out of nowhere, and it was First Peter two nine. So I looked at what it was, and it said, "But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for His own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light." And I was like. Like, what? <laughs> out of all the verses. Yeah. like, And it was so, like, only God could have done that. Mm-hmm. Out of all the verses in the book, he gave me that one verse. Like, he chose me for that Sunday to preach of the testimony mm-hmm. of, like, what he's done in my life. And so I got to, like, preach to the congregation, like, just about anxiety and different things, like how I struggled with it. But despite that, I got to be up there. And, like, God was totally evident through the whole thing because he had given me that verse. But then also while on stage, like, my nerves were completely gone and it was just peace the whole time and like it just really ministered to the people and so it was super cool just to see the Lord working through that entire thing even though in the beginning it's like God are you here like I don't feel any words from you or I feel super anxious but it was cool to look back on it now and be like God was totally there yeah Mm -hmm. that's super cool for me I kept thinking back like um past friendships that were kind of you know, not going the greatest, and I knew that God was telling me that I needed to get out of that, but it was kind of hard, like, in the middle of that, Mm -hmm. like, wanting to give that up because they were my friends, but now, like, looking back, having been on the other side of it now, and seeing, like, where they're at and what they've gone through, Mm -hmm. I see that God Mm -hmm. was really there, like, protecting me, and through that time, like, what similar to what Brenda was saying, like, it was really hard, like, I felt really lonely, but then I was relying, I had to rely on God, Mm -hmm. and that changed a lot. Yeah, Yeah, when you can just see God as, like, sometimes it takes you being empty Mm -hmm. for God to have space to fill you, Um, Mm -hmm. like, in that time, too, just, like, being lonely, like, God was like, no, I'm here to satisfy you, like, I'm here to be your friend, your refuge, your safe hiding place, like, the the one you can run to when you feel like you don't have anyone else Mm -hmm. to run to, Mm because, um, like, when the people that you would always trust in, the people that you would always go to, all of a sudden aren't there Mm -hmm. for you anymore, Mm -hmm. it's, but he's always there, so he's always, it's, it's just cool how constant God is, like, Mm -hmm. no matter, like, people, um, God's like an independent variable. Yeah. Everyone else, like, everyone else in your life is a dependent variable. People, um, as much as you like to think they are, people aren't faithful. People Mm -hmm. are always changing. People are always evolving. People are always going down different paths. But God is, God's character is always the same. Like, he'll always be, like, living water that's refreshing Mm -hmm. and satisfying. And he's always there to comfort you um, Mm -hmm. and be your safe place. Yeah, and Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times it takes those difficult moments for you to even, like, realize that. Mm-hmm. And just like, to be at, like, oh, I, I need you, like, God. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I need you this whole time. Like, why? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for, for sure. both of you guys, it's cool because you got to see God as a friend. And that's, like, such a powerful mm-hmm. attribute to, like, see yeah. him. Because it's easy to see him as a father or, like, our God or something. But, yeah. like, seeing him as a friend is just so, like, yeah sweet and everything. And, like, yeah. he wants to be with mm-hmm. you. And he wants to love you. And because, like, I went through the same thing and you're just, like, I feel like I don't have any friends, you know, and it's just really hard. You're like, God, why do I have to let go of this? But then in the end, it's like he just draws you in so much closer than you had before and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, So that takes us to point two, where obedience is about trusting God forward. Obedience moves us from sight following, religion, following without being connected to his heart to faith following, which is relationship. That requires we trust his heart. When the presence of God is in front of us, we don't have to think about where to go or where to stay. We just follow by sight, and that is religion, which never lets us experience God's heart. When God is pushing us forward in faith, we can feel as if he is abandoning abandoning us. But we need to trust his heart with what we can't see and can't know. God is calling us into a deeper trust with him, and he is doing that by putting us in positions that require trusting him like never before. So how is God pushing you forward in faith and obedience right now? I guess for me, um, yeah, I'm in a lot of transitioning in my life because I'm moving in less than a month. Mm -hmm. And that whole situation, like, around this time where I was, like, experiencing, like, loneliness and stuff, it was just also a very confusing time because I had to pray about uh, what um, I was going to do the next years because I felt like I felt that I was supposed to go to college um, because all the things I wanted to do in life all required... um, Mm -hmm higher levels of learning and stuff 
So when I was the whole time just praying and fasting about uh, what I was supposed to do, um, I, I had like three or four different paths in front of me and I, I went through like a month of fasting and I felt God just saying like, follow the cloud. And there was a bunch of other things he spoke through that. And he gave me peace about one thing, but the thing he gave me peace about was the thing that didn't make sense to me. And it was also the college that was farthest away. Mm -hmm. And I, I've never been one of those people that's like, oh, I want to get out of this small town. Like, I hate it here. Mm -hmm. I I really love this area. I think it's super chill. I love my family. I love this church. I love a lot of people here. And so I was never thinking like, oh, I want to move like all the way to Florida. That, that never really crossed yeah. my mind. I was always like, oh, like I'll probably go to like U of M or something. So... When God gave me peace about the school in Florida and, like, I didn't have peace about any other place, I was like, what is happening? And when I would tell people, like, it wouldn't make sense because people would always be like, oh, you're really smart. Like, you could be a doctor. You could do this. You could do that and that and make a bunch of money and stuff. And I'd always be like, yeah, like, that sounds because, you know, making lots of yeah. money sounds nice. And so that, yeah, so it didn't make sense to me that... Um, God would give me peace about um, a school that's more like ministry heavy and other things that I never really planned on doing. It's still stuff I really love because I love ministry. I love um, music and creativity and production and stuff, but it never really um, made sense to me at first. And when I when I told certain people, they wouldn't be super encouraging about it because, yeah, it just doesn't make sense to everybody. But that's usually how... Um, like God works sometimes mm -hmm. like a lot of stuff that he calls you to doesn't make sense yeah. to other people mm -hmm. and so this whole thing like I feel like I do feel like God's in front of me like how the cloud was in front of the Israelites yeah. um, but at the same time I feel like he's behind mm -hmm. me pushing like me pushing forward mm -hmm. um, in obedience to like be who I want to become one day like I, I feel him pushing me I, I basically feel God surrounding me like I see him in front of me but I also feel him pushing yeah. behind me <laughs> yeah it's funny because like you were saying some things that god calls you to just don't make sense to others and mm -hmm. i feel like that is like it happens like that with a lot of things and yeah. for me like being 18 and getting married at 19 like soon a lot of people are like why would you do that you're yeah. only gonna be 19 and like yeah. you have so much live time life, like, like, yeah, yeah live your life like party it up like i like i don't get it why would you do that and it can definitely look weird from the outside I guess to other people but like again the Lord's brought me peace through that but it was like it's not easy just walking into that when you have mm -hmm. everyone judging you about yeah mm -hmm. and so um it's just like a step of obedience into walking to that in August and everything but then also just preparing for marriage has been a lot of time to just be obedient to the Lord because it's a lot of sanctifying and like just purifying yourself because you see all the things that are wrong with you. Literally. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh. I, I have really so much am. respect for you because I know <laughs> that marriage is, uh, what's the word? Refining. Oh, totally. To where all, all the negative parts yep. about you are going to be exposed to someone Amen. and that does not sound fun to me. So I respect <laughs> you so much. <laughs> and so just different thing that things that the Lord has pointed out, it's like, okay, like I have to say say yes to letting you work on my heart and to say no to different temptations or to um honor my fiance or honor me or honor you and so it's just a lot of saying yes to him even when it's hard and so mm -hmm. it's just cool though because like i have faith that god's going to use that and is mm -hmm. going to reap blessings and build the kingdom through it mm -hmm. so even if it's hard now for yeah. sure and then i feel like the same pretty much um like, for YWAM, people are always like, oh, you're going for six months. Like, is that going to be, like, a career? Or, like, <laughs> why are you doing that when you can yeah. go to college? And it's just like, well, that's what God's calling me. Mm -hmm. Like, I know. Like, even though it's really scary and I'm nervous, like, I know that God's calling me towards that. And so I'm going to do it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But it definitely is hard, like, being obedient when everyone around you is mm -hmm. kind of, you know, holding, yeah. or making you feel like, it'll be for nothing but yeah yeah it's like why are you wasting but, your money yeah. if like this isn't gonna be a career it's like, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. gonna help you grow mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that's it's like you can't grow when you're so comfortable yeah. and mm -hmm. so like investing your resources into that even if it's only for six months is so valuable because it's gonna help you be who you want to become yeah. mm -hmm. and it's gonna help you uh 
grow to be the best cami and mm-hmm. um, be who God's called you yeah. to be. Mm-hmm. Or like the whole idea, like, what are you doing after? And oh, it's like, yeah. I have no idea, but yeah. I have faith that God will show me yeah. and he'll open those doors yeah. for me by being obedient going yeah. into YWAM. And it's okay, so. like... God doesn't call everybody to the same thing. Yeah. Like here, I feel like everyone's like, okay, you need to go to high school, then you need to go to college, and then you need to get this degree, and then you can get married, and then after a couple years, then you can have kids. Mm-hmm. But it's like everyone's God's timeline different. for everybody yeah. is yeah. different, and his like his his plans for everybody is so different. Mm-hmm. Like college might might not be a thing for you mm-hmm. if yeah. God hasn't led you mm-hmm. to that at all. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, what's the point of it's like it's better to be in the will of God, even if it doesn't make sense to everyone, yeah, or even exactly. if it's hard, yeah. than to be outside the will of God and be and more comfortable yeah. or be so more socially accepted. And everyone else supportive. Or yeah, whatever. exactly. And if we all had the exact same blueprint and everything, like the kingdom of God could not grow to what exactly. it's meant to be. But then also, like, it's always like a good sign too. Sometimes when we feel that resistance, even when God is calling us to things, because like we should be set apart from the world and stuff mm-hmm. and so yeah. the world's not going to understand why we're doing mm-hmm. those kind of things um that god yeah. is calling us to yeah and we if we all had the same gifts same calling same purpose <laughs> like same careers and everything <laughs> like yeah we wouldn't grow yeah. as a church as the mm-hmm. kingdom of god because like we need all the different parts we need the hand and the foot we, yeah. <laughs> we need we yeah. need the ears and the eyes like <laughs> Imagine if my whole body was just a nose. <laughs> like, or we just had, like, the entire... That would be ugly. <laughs> <laughs> or the, just the entire church was worship leader, so we're all just on stage. Or, or, yeah, no one in the called, congregation. <laughs> we're all called to be pastors, so we're all up here. Yeah. Like, it's just so beautiful that we're all called to different things. Yeah. It's like a beautiful mosaic. It's mm-hmm. like a whole body, not mm-hmm. just yeah. one part of the body. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's so good. That's awesome. Yeah, that leads us to our call to action. So our call to action this week is we just want you to pray and ask God, what areas in my life have I blamed God for abandoning me instead of trusting him that he's pushing me forward in those areas to grow in faith and obedience? Because like Mm -hmm. we said, a lot of times God might be pushing us forward in faith, um, but we're blaming him for Mm -hmm. abandoning us because Mm -hmm. it got really hard and difficult and we it feels dry. We don't see him. We don't hear him. So just pray and ask God to give you clarity about what he's pushing you forward into and say yes and be obedient and learn from this. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from your past disobedience and move forward with what he's Mm -hmm. called you to. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for um, this conversation. Thank you for your word that speaks to us, God. Um, I pray that we wouldn't just hear it and walk away, that we wouldn't just hear it and do nothing with it, that we would hear it, um, meditate on it, and grow from it, um, and move forward um, with what you've called us to. God, help us to be obedient. Help us to say yes to you, Lord. Um, Help us to honor you and glorify you with our lives, um, even if that means um, doing things that don't make sense to others, God, just being set apart, um, compromising um, our reputation to to do the things that you've called us to do, Lord. Help us to always say yes to you and to always be obedient and always um, to live a a life of faith, God. Lord, I pray that you would just bless whoever's watching this, God. I pray that you would give us all a great week um, and that we could all just move forward together as one church, as one body. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's all for this week's episode of DTS. Thank you for watching. It was a great conversation. It was. Yeah, it was fun. And we figured out what dog we would be. Exactly. (laughs) See, this was perfect. (laughs) Join us next week and make sure to like and share this video so that we can be in the community to impact the community. Have a blessed week. See ya.